so we've left Coral Bay this morning. Um, I enjoyed just a nice day relaxing on the beach and snorkeling there yesterday, which was cool. Um, and we're heading north now towards Winder Bandy. So sandcastle update. <laughs> it's pretty how, impressive. How do you reckon we went? I reckon a uh, score out of 10, I'd give it a 20. Oh, geez. Yeah. Good thing we're not teaching fractions. <laughs> All right. Which is pretty cute. It's awesome. So the day has come. We've surprised the kids and we're going to go out on a whale shark tour, which uh, it's, it's going to be so much fun. Uh, the clouds are a little bit there. There's yeah. a little bit of wind. They're but at least moving today. Hopefully they're going to move out of the way. Yeah. Um, they haven't cancelled or anything like So obviously they're still going ahead. Yep. So uh, yeah, we get to go out uh, past the reef and do a bit of whale shark watching. Yeah. So it should be we're so really fun. We're excited. It's something we've never done before. And the kids are a good age, I reckon, for it. Yeah. So it's going to be awesome. And they're super excited as well. Are you guys super excited? Yes. yes. <laughs> it's going to be so fun. I was so excited this morning when Mum woke up. I was like, what are you doing? i got to do school. And then she's like, no, you don't. We're going on a whale shark tour. Yeah, so the kids didn't know. So that was always fun when you get to surprise your kids. They always know there's something wrong when Mum's up before everybody else. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> what are you doing, Mum? Anyway, so we'll jump on the uh, bus that picks us up from this uh, Yardy Creek homestead. Yep. Takes us out to the boat. And yeah, should be good fun. Looking Hopefully the weather stays out, stays good. Yeah, it's fine. It'll should be, be right. fine. It'll still be awesome. A little bit blue up there. Yeah. It's anyway. Blue. It's exciting. <laughs> All right. Cool. Things are fast. How was that after? Yeah. Oh, gotta get out and do it.
They're good to go. Ah, one's come straight past the boat. It's just turned, guys. That's so cool. That was absolutely uh, <laughs> exhausting, but that was so epic. incredible, absolutely incredible. Amazing. Would definitely recommend doing the whale sharks. Um, yeah, we, do it. we would do that again in a heartbeat. It is expensive, but it's definitely worth it. Um, we were out there all day. We got there yep. at like 7.30 we or 8 o'clock for the boat. Yep. And then we didn't get dropped back until almost five o'clock. So we were on the boat the whole day. Yeah. Um, we went for about five swims all up with the sharks and two or three swims just um, snorkeling. Yeah. And every time you saw shark, whale sharks, we saw a tiger shark, we yeah. saw a couple of manta rays, we yeah. saw a uh, turtle. turtle, leopard shark, um, so we did the big a humpback three. whale, we a humpback whale, humpback whale yeah. as well. So like, wow, saw everything. And yeah. even the people on the boat were like, wow, that's awesome. You don't usually see that every day. So yeah. highly recommend. Um, yeah, Amazing day. I couldn't fault it at all. No. We had a few um, upset tummies on the boat, um, yeah. but None of that. Oh, Rafe was a bit sick, but that's all right. Yeah. So if you are, do get a bit seasick, remember to take some pills or whatever before you go on. Yeah. But um, but no, perfect day. So we went through whale shark tours, Ningaloo, Ningaloo whale shark, shark swim. Swim. There you go. Um, and we'll they put were up fantastic. a link or something. We or will something, we'll put up a link is, or something. Yeah, they were so good to. Um, fantastic staff. Yeah. They were so accommodating. Great with the kids. Um, really helped out with the kids like you know getting used to the snorkel and the flippers and all that sort of stuff yeah. out in the reef so the kids have snorkeled heaps before but I think it was pretty daunting like getting yeah. into that really and it wasn't um, their, their gear water. either yeah so yeah. they weren't used to the snorkels and that sort of stuff so yeah. maybe I know like if you if you do have little kids that are used to wearing their own snorkels yeah, yeah take, take it with it. you because they don't yeah. say you know you can't use it yeah. um, so if you've got your own that the kids are used to just take it yeah. even if it's a um, Thomas the Tank Engine or something yeah. it doesn't matter like nah. it's just that'll be so much more comfortable in the water knowing that they already know yeah. that they're used yeah. to it but anyway they still oh. they got the hang of it within yeah, yeah within yeah. one swim so they're all good ripper day couldn't fault the company fantastic good yeah. food great weather yeah the weather turned out the weather really was nice, awesome so yeah. yeah anyway anyway 
glad we did that. Pick that one off the bucket list because that's another one that we've been trying to do. It was terrible, but then it turned very sunny. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was super good. And then it turned terrible. And oh, then really right. good. It was all good. <laughs> all right. Good. But yeah, so that's another one off the bucket list because we've been yeah. wanting to do this for a couple of years now because every time we come here it's the wrong season or yeah. something like that. So yeah. absolutely recommend doing it. So good. Yeah. Anyway. Loved it. We'll continue on exploring a yep. uh, little bit of Exmouth um, over the next couple of days and the yep. rest of the Ningaloo Reef. Hmm. We've already done it uh, nine months ago, so we do have some episodes on that. If you wanted to check them out, they're back a few. Yep. Um, but yeah, we're just doing the bits that we missed. You've got to do it again. Yeah. It's amazing. Do you it. can do it over and over again. Anyway, that's enough of us rambling. Yep. We'll look drink. forward to tomorrow. Get some dinner. Go yeah. to sleep. Ready for another big day. Do it all over again. <laughs>
um, and just it's just a great vibe. We're, it's a Friday night now, and we're going to be doing the burger night. So you've got to order ahead for this. So if you're already here, you just tell them that you're coming, um, and it's just epic. You pre, like you pre-order, you pre-order, pay for your burger, pay for your so burger and then yeah. you just get it. And it's like cooked traditional way. It's a running cattle station, so there's um, there's definitely. Are you happy? You excited? He's excited. <laughs> it's our working cattle station, so there's you can buy meat from the um from the Upper reception, reception as well, yeah. like fresh, obviously off straight off the cow. They do scones, which we're going to look forward scones, to. Scones. They've got a cafe thing where they do yeah. coffees and scones in the yeah. morning and that sort of stuff as well. So Very really cool. awesome. Come check it out. Yeah. It's so good. Burger night tonight. They're doing 350 burgers for all the people here. So, so that's pretty bloody amazing. Pretty epic. Really. We're looking forward to seeing how this is going to work out. Yeah. So we'll put a bit of footage up there. Probably won't be yeah. too coherent because we've all sort of had a few beers, but um. But no, should be good. Should be a good night. And then tomorrow we're going to go do a bit of exploring. So yeah. anyway, check it out. Yeah. How good's the scones? Oh yeah, shouldn't scone and drive, but uh... <laughs> So we had to um, go get ourselves some scones from Ballara Station. Um, apparently they're awesome, haven't tried them yet. Mm. Um, they also do brownies, who's got a brownie back there? Me! Bordy's got a brownie, Rafe's got a brownie, yum. That's Ari. Or Rafe's in the other car. Ah, Cobby. Yeah, so yeah, delicious apparently, so we'll mm. give it a go, Mark's review. Pretty good. Bloody awesome scones. Be left in the moustache for tomorrow. <laughs> Yum, oh. Oh, nice. So today we're heading out from Ballara Station. Scones were awesome, by the way. Um, down to Coral Bay. Um, yes, we've been at Coral Bay already, not long ago. But when we were there, we didn't get to go out to um, Five Fingers Reef because it was just there was a really bad westerly, so we didn't actually get to snorkel out there. Um, but that's the joy, I think, of Ballara Station. It's quite centrally located, so it's not far. I think it's only about 50, 4K or yeah, something back awesome. down to Coral Bay um, or 70 something K back up to um, Exmouth. So it's not a bad spot. If you're in peak season and you can't get a spot in Exmouth or Coral Bay or out at Windabandi or something like that, it's quite, you can actually get to those places for day trips from, from here. So yeah, that's what we're doing. Head down there, have a little snorkel at Five Fingers, and see how that goes. We're also going to have a bit of a uh, sausage sizzle lunch oh, yeah. from the uh, Ballara Station sausages? meat works. So they've yeah. got there. You can get yep. ste steaks and sausages and all that sort of stuff, fresh off the grass, I suppose. <laughs> fresh from the paddock. Fresh from the paddock. Yeah. We'll try them out. So that'll be nice. A little sausage sizzle on the beach. So yeah, it should be make for a good day. So the verdict is in, the Ballara sausages are Delicious. the bomb, they're really good. So do yourself a favour and buy a packet of them, really nice. They're really yummy. Can't go wrong with the sausage sizzle by the beach. So this is Five Fingers Reef, Five Fingers Reef. Yeah. And um, Mark saw a turtle out there, nice reef out there to swim out to. Yeah. 
can drive on the beach, they can park out here, put your awning out, have a sausage sizzle. It's a beautiful spot. Yeah, it's really good. And then you, you buy fingers because there's all these fingers of reef that go out from the beach sort of thing. So. Yeah, you just follow them out and yeah. have a snorkel around. And you can fish here as well. Yeah, so it keeps everyone happy. So we're all pretty much contained here, that's good. Yeah, it's good. Alright, we'll keep going. Good, uh, good place to spend the day. Yeah. Perfect. So what are we doing here, Kate? So we're adding our bottle to the bottle tree here. Basically just find a spot and hang your bottle on. We've got a sticker on there. Everyone knows who we are. You hang it here. There's some with like notes in the bottles and things like that. Lots of stickers written on or just written on one. Pretty cool. Hmm. So we're checking out donkey shower tonight. So this is a bucket shower that's heated with a wood fire out the back here. I wouldn't say it's overly warm tonight, but it's fun. It's something different. <laughs> and it's cool. Not bad at all. All right, so that was our bucket shower done. It was very cool. Like completely something different and um, quite well done. Like it's got heaps of cool features in here. They've got the gum trees right in behind us. The lights actually light up the trees at night when you're in here. There are actually big proper lights as well in here. So you can actually turn those on and you get heaps more light too. So it depends what sort of rustic feel you're going for. But yeah, it was really nice. Really refreshing up there in the bucket. The bucket fills up and then it's basically your shower head. So. I got sneaky behind, <laughs> behind the tree here. Sneaky behind the tree. Very cool. <laughs> He's a little bit dodgy. <laughs> no, it's very cool. But no, it was cool. This place is really rustic, isn't it? Mm. Really cool features. Lots of things that attract people to the area, I think, because it's not just just standard things. There's so many different things to check out and yeah. do, and we've enjoyed it. It's been a great stay here. Lots of charm. Lots of charm. We'd actually like this in our own backyard when we eventually get some property somewhere, hey? Yeah. That would be nice. But anyway, time to get back to the kids. Alrighty, so we decided to stop at um, Cape Croydon on our way through to Broome. Um, we wanted to come here last year as well, but we didn't quite make it. So we thought this year we'd pop by, uh, check out what it's like. There's a few options for camping here. So there's a big camping area up sort of what would you call maybe the main camp area, um, which is kind of just packed in with heaps of people. Um, everyone's just kind of lined up next to each other. It looks out over to the ocean. It's a lovely view, um, but it, for us, it was just a little bit too chockers. So we came down here to the little creek um, where, the, uh, where the ocean enters the creek here. Um, and we found a nice little spot just here basically fairly secluded on our own and then a couple more vans further up the creek um, and it's really nice so it was I think um, ten dollars per person per night per adult and three dollars for the older kids so all kids under six were free so just for the older two it was three bucks a night so it's 26 bucks a night to stay here um, there are toilets here drop toilets and basically you've got the creek you can fish in or explore um, or you can just go straight out to the ocean and fish and um, there as well. So it's quite cool. And the creek here obviously is tidal um, and with the big tides that they get up this way, 
I think today we're getting about a 6.7 meter tide, or 6.9 meter tide. Um, so this this will actually fill up with heaps of water. So it's going to actually be quite interesting just to sit here and watch this filling up through here today. Um, and then we can do some fishing in the creek. I think it's known for some threadfin salmon. Um, and down by the beach, uh, I think you get whiting and threadfin. Um, I think you can get mangrove jack in here as well. Um, and the odd trevally or queenie as well. So either here or down the beach. So we'll give it a try, see how we go. Um, but yeah, we're pretty happy with this little spot. It's pretty cool. So everybody might have heard about the whole um, swift cookers fiasco that's going on at the moment with the caravans um, and how we can't use our gas cooktop inside um, till God knows when. Um, so all of a sudden we've got an outdoor kitchen. <laughs> Luckily we um, you know, paid all this money for this van so we could cook inside all the time. <laughs> we didn't opt for the slide out kitchen because they were about didn't. four or five thousand dollars but I think we may have we may have bettered this one. I think we've, you know, hit the nail on the head here. So we zipped off to Mitre 10 um, a little while ago and picked ourselves up a twin cooker, gas cooker, gas mate. Um, and this is our little outdoor cooking setup now. So we basically can just hang out here, do our cooking um, out when it's beautiful. I don't know what we're going to do if it's freezing cold or pouring down with rain, but we'll see what happens. We'll use the induction cooker. Well, that's true. We can use the induction cooker inside then, can't we? So that's our little fix to the solution at the moment. Mm. Um, so yeah, these boys are living their best life. Scrambled eggs, right by the creek. Look at that. There's some weirdo down in the creek. Look at that weirdo down there. <laughs> hey, weirdo, <laughs> little onlooker. <laughs> so yeah, that's been our little solution for it anyway. So, you know, we thought there's no point worrying about it too much. Just get on with it and yeah. get a simple, simple way of fixing it. Um, we already had the induction cooker that we use in the back of the car when we're off grid anyway, but I mean, I think it only cost us about 160 yeah. bucks anyway when we bought yeah. it. So there are some simple solutions around. The induction cookers do use a lot of battery power, so it probably wouldn't be great to be using it all the time in the caravan, but if we have to, we can use it in the back of the car or we can use it in the van um, just for short times. So yeah. Adapt and overcome. Good. Yeah, that's right. No and point we'll, looking about it. Yeah. We'll just wait and see when a solution arises or... And I think... So this spot here is just if you keep driving down from the creek from where we are and you get like a nice little beachfront sort of camp spot, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, it's really cool actually. There are some sharper sort of rocks here and that sort of stuff which you probably wouldn't see on high tide but low tide would be alright. Haven't heard of a fish. The sun's just popping its head out now so it's beautiful. It's really nice. It's so really good. Cool. So there's a few different campsites you can go to. You can see up there, that's where the main one is. Um, and they're all pretty much jammed in there. And then there's another bit up around the peak a bit more there, up around the point where you can just sort of go in wherever you want. The boat, there's a boat ramp up there. So where we are on the river there is nice and um, well, secluded. There's only a couple of people there, so that's why we, we sort of like it. Um, they've got long drops up there too as well, which is good, so that's all catered for. But yeah, so you can go up there, which is obviously right on the, the waterfront there. Uh, but with low tide, you can see it's all just fairly rocky and everything like that, so it just depends on what you're after. But yeah, it's a real nice spot. Check out how much this tide rises. Have a look at it.
Well, that was pretty cool. It's amazing to see how quick the tide comes in and out. So we had all these people that were fishing here at high tide and were catching nothing. Everyone left. And because obviously we we're staying here, we said, ah, bugger, we'll keep fishing. We ended up catching about 10 or 11 uh, whiting. So just as the tide was coming out, all those little pockets of um, the little sandbars that were out there, all the whiting was sort of stuck in there. So we're just pulling them in. That was good. The kids all caught some, so everyone had a bit of fun. Kate's out there now just clinging on to Hope. And she might be able to catch one because, you know, she hasn't caught any yet. I have so. Okay, so she's probably caught about I four. I also let the kids zip reel in all my ones so they could catch something. <laughs> anyway, everyone had fun. The kids are over on that island now playing because they just give up on fishing after about 10 minutes and they're, um, they're over there having a bit of fun. So yeah, all good. What a cool spot. I know I've said that about a hundred times, but it is. Little tech tip here, Mark's tire talk for today. Um, so we've had, um, we're always having troubles with our tires. We have sidewall damage, all that sort of stuff, but that's a different story. Come out this morning and front tires looking really flat. It's like almost on the rim. And I'm like, nah, there's another sidewall. She's buggered. But before we start getting too concerned, Got the air compressor out, and you see here we've pumped her up, and now you get some Windex or some soapy water or something like that, and you go around, and I've got a lot of like sidewall nicks and things like that in the sidewalls. You can see a few nicks there, things like that. So I go around with the Windex and just give it a little bit of a spray and see if any bubbles come out. Now I did all that, and there was no bubbles coming out, which is a good sign. Um, but the air's obviously got to be going somewhere. So next thing is to check the valve. Now, because we're always letting tires down, pumping them up, letting them down, pumping them up, all that sort of stuff, you're always taking that valve in and out, in and out all the time. Um, it can either not seat properly, or it could be a bit of gunk that gets stuck in behind it so it doesn't quite seal. So over the 12 hours that we've parked up at night, uh, it's gone flat. So, save your water. So as you can see, she's bubbling away. So I'll just get my tie um, tool. I'll just tie, um, tighten that stemmer and then just see if it stops bubbling. If it doesn't, I have to pull it out. Might just be a bit of gunk on there and then put it back in and then just do the tire pressures again. So not always doom and gloom. You just got to check some of the basics. Um, and if that wasn't um, leaking, there could have been a nail or something else in the tire. Or you just pump them up, check them again in a couple of hours or whatever and see if the uh, pressure's gone down or not. But yeah couple of little basic things some people you spit you can spit on it and rub it on there if you're out in the middle of nowhere you haven't got windex um, and you'll see bubbles coming out so yeah anyway good tip all right so I've just pulled that valve out cleaned it off put it back in and now we'll do the squirt test again and see if it's still bubbling that looks pretty good so we'll just pump it back up again just keep an eye on it, wait another six hours or so, come out and just check it. So hopefully not having to change another tire out. All right, well that was Cape Croydon all done. Um, Croydon, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, it was really good, good little spot. Down there on the uh, creek entrance, or the river entrance. Quite nice. Yeah, it was a bad little spot. Probably the only problem was the sand flies weren't so great. Um, Aster in particular is quite bitten up, but anyway, that is part of outdoor life, I think. The thing with kids is they don't usually tell you they're getting bitten until they're already bitten, and then they've got all these dots over them, so lather them up like sunscreen, I think, just do it preemptively. True. So it wasn't bad fishing in that little creek area. Whiting is mainly what we got. Um, we got some um, garfish over off the rocks near the boat ramp. Apparently you can catch um, mackerel over there, but we weren't lucky enough. But yeah, great spot. I really quite liked it there. So it's a government owned um, site and it's, oh, well for us it was $26 a night. It's $10 an adult per night and $3 for kids over six. Um, and then there's a $12 entry fee for vehicles that you just pay once if you're camping there. So a nice low cost camp and plenty of sites to pick from as you would have seen with what we did there. Yeah. So many different areas. So now we're headed towards Port Smith. Um, so there's a lagoon here that fills up on high tide and it's quite nice for swimming in and chilling out. And then on low tide it all runs out and it's all sort of sand flats and stuff there or mud flats. You can do some crabbing or 
All right, so in typical us fashion, we forgot to do any uh, filming at Portsmouth. Um, we're only there for one night anyway, um, but we caught up with some friends and we went down and did a bit of fishing. Um, there's a there's a lagoon there, um, and then there's an inlet where you can go around the outside, and it's where the sea meets the the inlet pretty much. And did a bit of fishing there, and the boys are really good, They're successful. The younger fellas caught a couple of um, rock cod and some brim and things like that, and uh, Kate caught some as well. So yeah, everyone had a bit of fun. We had some fish and chips cook up, and then we've moved on now to Barnhill Station. So right on the coastline here at Barn Hill. Really beautiful spot. Um, you can camp, there's powered sites and watered sites and we're in the unpowered section. So we're up on the ridge. So you can actually, yeah, you've got ocean views. Whereas in the um, powered and watered sites, you're not, you just jammed in, it's like caravan park. So um, really like the unpowered section and it's beautiful sunny days anyway. So we're getting full solar every day, which is good. We've just already been down to the beach, had a swim, um, and then the Savi we're going to go down and have a bit of a fish. Uh, pretty good campsite, they've got um, a little cafe that does um, fresh baked goods, coffees, uh, they have pizzas, you can order pizzas and they'll bring them in, um, homemade pizzas, so yeah, it's really quite cool. A bit of everything, it's a bit rustic but it's also a bit you know, modern sort of thing, so it's quite good. And there's the wind for a change. But anyway, so yeah, we're here. we spent two nights here, um, last night tonight. Um, so yeah, just have a bit more of an explore before we head off and keep heading uh, north. So the sun's setting over this way, so the opposite side to the ocean. And it's just the shade is coming through here and it's looking absolutely beautiful. The colours that are coming off that cliff at the moment are just amazing. Such a beautiful spot. Mark and the boys are down there fishing off the rocks, so hopefully they catch something. You never know. But yeah, it's just beautiful. Such a beautiful place. <laughs> a little water amongst the sea, uh, seabed sand bed there. Yeah. Let me start again. <laughs> 